Uh, we're going to pick up with this part of your notes, okay? You see secant times secant minus cosine. As we pick up here, uh, we're just going to do a few problems. We're going to do problem number 9. We're problem number 11. We're going to do problem number 14. And we're going to do problem number 15, okay? So those are our four problems we're going to look at. Then we're going to let you go to your assignment. A lot of people are able to finish it during class, just eight problems. Notice in the previous uh, example we talked about, it's nice if you have ones and it's nice if you have squares. Agreed? I don't have a one or a squared. So I'm going to try to create one by multiplying. What is secant times secant? Secant squared of theta. And what's the relationship between secant and cosine? They are, and if you multiply reciprocals, you get... So I get a secant squared minus 1. Am I happy to see that? Yeah, that's on my sheet. That should be paired up with number 6. What is secant squared minus 1 on your sheet? Tangent squared. And that's that. So sometimes multiplying can create a squared. For number 11, I have a 1. I don't have a squared. I notice that if I multiply this out, I'm going to eventually create a squared. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times cosine is cosine. Negative cosine times 1 is negative cosine. And negative cosine times cosine is negative cosine squared. What do you notice about that? What do you notice about the middle? They're the same and they cancel, don't they? So these are gone. You have a positive cosine and negative cosine. And I'm left with a 1 minus cosine squared. Hey, I've got my 1 and I've got my squared. What could 1 minus cosine squared be? Sine squared. Sine squared. So you glance at 14, I don't have any squares. I don't have anything I can factor out. But if I do change this to cosine of theta over 1 times sine of theta over 1 times sine of theta over cosine of theta, I glance at that to ask myself, was that a good idea? And to decide whether or not it's a good idea, am I going to end up with a squared out of that? Yeah, because what happens to the cosines? They cancel. they cancel, and I'm left with 1 minus sine squared. sine squared. So I did get my 1, I did get my squared, and 1 minus sine squared is the same as cosine squared of theta. Last problem, number 15. Before we do 15, I'm just going to write down your strategies that we've used so far. Number one, we rewrote things in terms of sine and cosine. That's what we practiced in our checkpoint right away, right? The second thing that we did is we substituted something. For example, if you see 1 minus cosine squared, you substituted sine squared. The third thing that we did yesterday is we factored. We took something out, okay? Okay. And then the fourth thing we tried today is we tried multiplying. Look at number 15. Which of those four do you think is the appropriate approach and why? Share with the person next to you what's the appropriate approach and why. Go ahead and talk. Um, Okay, our option here is to factor. And I see that I could take out a cosine squared. And when I do, what am I left with? 1 plus
If I take a cosine squared out of that, what am I left with? Cotangent squared. Cotangent squared. So notice the factoring now leads me to a next uh, uh, kind of method. And my method is to now substitute. What can I plug in for 1 plus cotangent squared? Cosecant squared. That's number 7 on your sheet. So I just substitute something in. And now I'm going to go ahead and simplify that by writing it in terms of sine and cosine. I have cosine squared over 1 times 1 over cosecant is the same as sine. What is cosine squared over sine squared? Cotangent squared. That's my answer. Okay. So, four problems kind of tidy this off. Please look at your homework. The front page is alternating into terms of sine and cosine. Hopefully you've done that. If you haven't, you need to get caught up on that. The next page is all about what we just did. There are eight problems. These are good, good examples. Problem one, or section one, or uh, your first homework assignment, your second homework assignment, that'll be a really good indication of the types of problems you'll see on the test. Right now, it looks like the final exams for mathematics are said that they're supposed to be next week Friday. Okay, next week Friday. You should make it next week Thursday, so then we can have fun Friday. Um, I would, maybe we can do front Thursday. So I have the answers posted up there. You guys can check it on out.